What is up guys, I hope everyone is doing well and today we are finally going to put together our 8700k PC build. I know that part 1 was a while ago and if you haven't seen all the parts I will leave them linked down below for you but as you know if you follow me on social media I had some major disasters here in the studio so I had to get everything sorted but finally we can go ahead and build this system. So this will be a complete step by step guide showing you how to put this system together from start to finish to hopefully help you get into PC building. So with that said guys, let's jump into it. So as always, just like every single build we do, we will go ahead and prepare the motherboard first of all. So let's start by installing our CPU. Just make sure when you are holding the CPU, you do hold it by the sides to avoid any damage and getting any grease or oils on the little connections down below. And just take note of the gold triangle on the CPU as we'll be matching this up to the triangle on the socket itself. So to install the CPU, simply lift the latch as you can see here and go ahead and place the CPU in the socket, matching those triangles up of course. And when you are finished, just go ahead and close the latch back over and the top cover should pop off. Just make sure you put this somewhere safe, just in case you need it down the line. Next up, it's time to go ahead and install the RAM. Just take note of the little cutout on the RAM stick itself, as we'll be matching this up with the notch on the motherboard dim slot. When you are ready, simply open the slots up by pressing down the little tabs, then you can go ahead and press the RAM into place. All you have to do is apply some force downward until it clicks and then you are good to go. So one last thing to do before we put the board in the case and that is to install our M.2 drive. So the first thing to do is remove the shield. We do this by simply removing the screw and then lifting the shield away from the board. Now we will install the standoff that is included in the box, which I will say is a little footery to get installed, but just bear with it. So now we can go ahead and install our M.2 drive. Just make sure that the notch is lined up properly and simply push it into place. From there you can go ahead and screw it down with the included screw. Now all we have to do is go ahead and reinstall our shield. Just make sure that you go ahead and peel the backing off the little heat pads just to make sure that there is no plastic in between. Then simply reinstall it the way you have taken it off, screw it down and you are good to go. So there is one last thing to do before installing the motherboard into the case and that is to put our IO shield into place. Make sure you have it the correct way around and just apply some force and it will snap into place. So now go ahead and grab your motherboard and place it into the case, lining it up with the IO shield and the standoffs. From there you can grab the motherboard screws and they look like this. And all you have to do is go ahead and secure the board down. Make sure to tighten in a crisscross pattern to avoid any stress to the motherboard. And obviously just make it hand tight, don't go too crazy. So now let's go ahead and prepare our CPU cooler. I'm not going to go over the full process on how to install this cooler as I have already made a dedicated video which I will leave linked down below that will show you all the steps so don't worry about that. The only difference here in the fitment is that the 500D has removable brackets on the front and top that require you to loosen two thumb screws. From there you can take the bracket out and all you have to do is fit the radiator and fans as normal and then you can put the bracket back in place. All of the other steps are the exact same as the previous video. Just note if you are using this cooler for the first time, thermal paste is already pre-applied but if you are reusing it like me then you should give it a good clean and reapply your thermal paste and you are pretty much sorted. So now it's time to install the power supply. First off, install all the included cables that you will need and these are all included in the box and just push into place with ease and they are all clearly labelled. Now we can go ahead and put the power supply in the case, fan facing down and line it up with the rear as we will now use the four included screws to secure it in place. When you have secured your power supply down, all we have to do now is install our hard drives. As I'm using all SSD in this build, I will be using the caddies that you see here. If you're using mechanical drives, just refer to the guide. To remove the caddy, just loosen the thumb screw and pull it away. So now all you have to do is secure the drives onto the caddies using the included screws and basically just put them back into place. It is a super simple process. So now the fun begins, let's go ahead and wire everything up. First give the motherboard some power using the 24 pin connector and attaching it like you see here. Now go ahead and give the CPU some power using the labelled cable and all you have to do is plug it into the top left of your motherboard. Just make sure all of your connections are nice and tight. Now grab the HD audio cable 
and attach it to the pins labelled audio. It can only go in one way, so just take your time. Next up is our front panel USB 3 cable. Unlike previous builds, the USB 3 connection is on the left hand side of the board, so line it up and push it into place. As the 500D features a front panel USB-C port, we have to connect this up to the motherboard and you will find that port next to your USB 3 port, so just plug that into place. The last job is to connect the rest of the front panel cables and luckily Gigabyte makes sure the job is super easy and supply a connector. So just match all the cables up and then plug it into the front panel connections on the motherboard as you see here. Okay, so the next job that I would do is go ahead and connect all my fans. If you watch part one, you will know that I am using some extra Corsair LL120 fans, but if you are using the bare minimum, just go ahead and connect these up to the motherboard fan headers that you see here. If like me, you are going to go ahead and use some LL120s, I have installed two up top and one on the rear, and I will be using the Commander Pro to connect all of these, and this will allow me to control all my fan settings and obviously my RGB lighting, etc. So the setup for that is super easy, you just plug them in to the corresponding ports. Very easy, give it some power and you are good to go. So the last job that I do before installing the graphics card is to wire up all of our SSDs in the rear. First of all, give them all some power with a SATA cable from the power supply. Then take the SATA cables that you get in the motherboard box and plug one end into the drive and the other into the motherboard SATA ports that you can see here. And that is pretty much all your drives good to go. Now we can go ahead and install our graphics card. The first part is to remove the two brackets that you can see me doing here, which are the second and third down from the top. Now push the latch down on the PCIe slot to open it up. Then we can simply push our graphics card into place and secure it down with the two screws that we had removed from the brackets. Just make sure to give some support to the card while securing it to make sure that no sag is occurring. The final step is to give the graphics card some power with the two 8 pin PCIe cables from the power supply. So that's pretty much the job done, all we do now is plug it in and hit that power button and hopefully it will boot into the BIOS and everything will be listed. From there you can simply go ahead and install Windows as well as the drivers and pretty much get gaming. So that is the full build guys, it really isn't a hard build to do and building in the 500D was an absolute pleasure and honestly it looks absolutely stunning. I really love this case, it looks real premium. So if you have any questions about the build you know you can ask down below or hit me up on Twitter etc and I will get back to you straight away. As always guys, thank you so much for tuning in, stay safe, be kind to each other and I will catch you on the next one. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.